Hello, my name is Tony Botting and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video we show how you can interpret the results from random vibration PSD output. As you probably already know, there are two outputs from a random vibration analysis. One is the RMS response and two is the PSD response. These quantities can be used together to estimate the overall response characteristics of the structure to the random vibration input. Let's quickly review the RMS results. The RMS response gives you the 1 sigma root mean square vibration amplitude in terms of stress, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. These images show some of the quantities you can plot. From probability theory, you can claim the values shown here alternate between plus 1 sigma and minus 1 sigma about 68% of the time. Your customer's criterion is used to determine if the values are acceptable. As mentioned, the values reported by simulation are the 1 sigma values. Your customer may have 2 sigma or 3 sigma specifications. For example, if your customer indicates their structure needs to withstand 3 sigma values of stress, you would need to multiply the result values from simulation by a factor of 3. From probability theory for the 3 sigma case, you can report that simulation values will be between plus 3 sigma and minus 3 sigma about 99.7% of the time. Alternatively, you can state that the structure can exceed these values for only about 0.3% of the time. Now for the PSD results. The PSD output will tell you what excitation frequencies contribute most to the structure response. For example, we can develop a contour plot of the PSD response acceleration of this structure. On the results folder, define a new acceleration plot. We can choose appropriate units in this drop down. Then, in advanced options, check the Show PSD Value option. Since we don't know what frequency to choose for the plot step, we select the Plot Bounds Across All Steps option. Next, probe the point of interest on the structure where you need to see the frequency response. say at this component lead and click on the response button. The graph shows the level of response at particular frequencies for this location but it's difficult to make out the frequency values. If you right click on the graph you can change the frequency axis to logarithmic to better identify the values. We hover the mouse over the highest response and see about 40 Hz. The next highest response is about 65 Hz. And the next highest response occurs at about 265 Hz. The PSD values or power spectral density units do not have a physical analog. They are a consequence of the input which is also in PSD units. The RMS results should be used to interpret the actual response levels at points on the structure. Nevertheless, the PSD results show that these three frequencies contribute the most response at that point on the structure. If we probe a different point on the structure, say this corner of the circuit board, we see the largest contribution to the response occurs at about 207 Hz. In this video, we examine how to interpret PSD results from a random vibration simulation. The PSD, or power spectral density data, helps identify the excitation frequencies that contribute the most response. The RMS, or root mean square data, shows the levels of response.